Downtown TJ Brown joins me now as he gets ready for his next fight, UFC 252, and it goes down two weeks from now on August the 15th against Danny Chavez. TJ, how are you? Man, I'm great, man. Uh, a great day. Training's going well. Just catching a little rest in between sessions. Very nice. Well, I appreciate the time. And this was just announced uh, a, a day or two ago, and the fight is less than two weeks from now. When did you find out? Uh, less than a week ago, man. It, it wasn't, uh, but a few days ago. I've been trying to get a fight. Uh, I've been I've been staying in shape. Uh, I've been with my manager, Jason, just trying to get a fight. I've been staying in shape. And I told him, man, I, I don't need a full eight weeks. You know, I'm, I'm ready to get a fight. I'm ready to get back in there. Um, and I finally got the call about a month ago. But, man, I've been having trouble out of my back, but finally through physical therapy uh and different things man my, my back's 100 percent, and this call came and man we're, we're ready to go nice well i'm definitely excited to see you step back into the cage uh obviously you train year round and you're staying ready as you said what has this camp been like during this pandemic how are things for you in arkansas and as things opening back up there uh i assume like like most gyms man this this has put a quite a strain in our gym both both for me working at the gym and, and and training you know uh, we're starting to get things back to close to normal but nowhere near what we was but i'm lucky to have uh, a few training partners that we just kind of stayed together and and helped keep each other accountable and got our training in but man it's it's definitely been different you know i've had to tra uh, change things up uh, do some different kind of workouts outside and uh, but we're, we're getting it done yeah have you had to pay a little bit more close attention to your diet uh during this time to kind of keep it in check yeah man luckily we have a, have a local company called healthy chew uh they do meal preps for me and man i've been doing that for the last two months so it's allowed me to to, to take fights uh on short notice like like i am uh for this fight you know i'm a, I'm a big 45 or so uh i'm just lucky I, i've been doing those small things right you know it, it's here I am at 30, man. I, I feel like uh, my time's now, man. You know, I've got to, I've got to do it now. That I can't make any exceptions and take any shortcuts. So I'm doing all the small things right. Like, and, and when I mean small things, I mean nutrition and 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 doing all those small things right. What is your weight at today? Uh, 63, 64. Okay, wow. So what do you normally walk around at? Are you upwards of, of around well, seven? <laughs> uh, after that last fight, man. Uh, so I got up to 181 uh like a week after my fight i mean just eating drinking just being a true glutton you know <laughs> i was like 181 well you know you you need to break every once in a while to, to be a human being and, and do your thing now, i know you're a family man and, and a proud father uh i i see all the pictures you post of, you, of your son on instagram which is which is very cool now he's a baseball player who oh who, yeah man who does he want to grow up and, and be like Man, you know, he. I hope he sticks with baseball. He he does great. His his team this year was undefeated. Man, I I think his coach was telling me he, he had almost a thousand uh, batting average. So that you know that that's pretty impressive. You know he uh, and, and and you know I, I'm all for him doing a sport. He doesn't have to get beat on and get punched in the face. And you know it, it'll definitely be more healthy for him. And he's got some great coaches out there. And and uh, man, if if baseball's the road, I, I'd love it. What does he think of MMA? Like when you go out there and do your thing, does does he like that? Does he gravitate towards it? Yeah, I mean, he he does like it. You know, he uh, uh, he's always in the gym with me. You know, several of my buddies always at the gym, usually mess around with him a bit, and he likes doing. It. He's done a few tournaments. He won a, the state wrestling tournament last year. You know, he does it. Uh, I, I honestly would, would never want him to to become a professional fighter. You know, as as me being one, I know what that takes. You know the damage it's put on me, the the emotional roller coasters it puts you on. You, I don't want that for him. You know that I feel like there's easier roads he can take. However, uh, I think it's good uh, for for a kid to know how to defend itself, how to how to have confidence in itself, and and, and know uh, how to take care of itself in, in case something did come up. No doubt. And hey, those baseball players, if he makes the MLB, they make some big bucks. He'll be real living. money. Real <laughs> money, man. Yeah. No doubt. Now, I, as I mentioned to you before we went live, I follow you on Instagram. Uh, Downtown TJ Brown is, is where you can find this man and give him a follow. You posted a video a while back that literally made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I couldn't believe it. I, I had, I mean, I didn't know if it was really you or if it was yeah. your 
something, but you had a, a fish and a big snake came and got it. I'm just going to let you tell the story for anyone that didn't see it. Yeah, man, just uh, just another day in Arkansas, man. We, uh, uh, me and my son was out fishing. Uh, we, we caught a pretty nice catfish, and uh, we put it on a stringer so we could take it home later and, uh, and eat it. And, and my son comes yelling. You know, he's scared to death. He's like, Dad, there's a snake. There's a snake. And we run over there, and the snake has just got a, got a hold of our catfish. You know, the whole head of the snake was – the whole head of the catfish was in the snake's mouth, man. It, it was really gruesome, man. And uh, uh, long story short, this snake got my dinner, you know. So uh, uh, it was quite a sight, man. If you if you guys get a chance, y'all should uh, check out my Instagram page and check out the video. It was it was a crazy sight. Do you know what kind of a snake it was? Was it poisonous? You know, I thought I thought originally it was like uh, some sort of rattlesnake or some sort of water mosquito, which is poisonous, but. Once I looked into it, I had a few of my friends look in the video. It was just a, a like a water snake, and they're not they're not poisonous. You know, it looked like the, a poisonous because of that diamond shaped head, but I think his head mostly looked like that because it was around the, the fish. But it comes up, it wasn't a poisonous snake, but it was it was scary enough for me to let him have have my dinner. Yeah, do you go swimming in that water? No, man, not that one, dude. <laughs> but I will swim, you know, but but not that one. Yeah. Okay. Is there a lot of snakes down around Arkansas? I kind of think there is, right? It's crazy. It's uh, you know, but if you want to fish, you know that that's usually where there's uh fish, there's snakes. You know, there, there, there's and uh, you know, you, you do things like frog gig or hunt. Man, there, there's going to be snakes, man. So you you kind of gotta get used to it somewhat. You know, uh, I don't like snakes, but most of the time, if you don't mess with them, they won't mess with you. You know, but I don't go around fooling with them too much. Yeah, fair enough. I'm with you 100% there. Now, the last time we did see you in the, the Octagon, it was right before this whole pandemic struck uh, and basically shut the whole world down in for, for a while anyways. Right. Uh, that, that didn't go your way. You lost that to Jordan Griffin. I got to imagine it left a bad taste in your mouth and you know really wanted to make you you know get back in the Octagon as soon as possible. Yeah. How has that driven you uh, these last few months uh, since that loss? Well, you know, you... you, you... I, I try to take what I can from every one of my fights, whether it's a win or a loss. And, you know, what I took most from that fight is, you know, I, I had, I was too set in stone on a certain game plan going into that fight, you know, and, and realistically I did not fight my fight. I didn't fight the way that, that, that got me to the UFC and that, and that that's being uh, letting these hands go, being an explosive fighter and, and going out there and, and opening up. And, you know, although, I was winning the, the whole fight up and up until the choke, you know, that's not the way I fight. You know, I, I felt like I was forced to take the guy down and, and, and to really control top position. And, and this next fight, I just want to come out there and open up and, and be the fighter that got me there. The exciting fighter that got me there and open up, let these hands go and, 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 and just fight, man. I want to go out there and just fight. And, and what, it, what bothered me most about that fight wasn't the fact of me getting choked. It was the fact that, I didn't fight my fight. I didn't open up out there. You know, I was fighting like a safe fight, a tight fight, and and I'm most upset about that. And I'm just ready to go out there, open up, be me, and 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 let and just let it go. Mm -hmm. Now, contender series, uh, which you know pretty well, starts again tonight. Uh, are you excited for that to start back up? I, I love that Dana White contender series. You know, it it, cha it really changed my life, man. It gave me the opportunity to to be in the UFC now. And, and I think it's a great platform for, for up and coming fighters. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple guys here. There's a, a Chiron Brown. I think he's from, uh, from up in North Arkansas and also Matt Dixon. He came back, uh, about two weeks ago and sparred with us. Uh, they're, they're both on uh, a couple of the seasons coming up and, uh, I'm sure them guys will do great and kind of represent from our, our, our kind of local area here. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I'm very excited that Contender Series is back. It gives us something else to watch during the week. Uh, and then, you know, we're having fights almost every weekend now, thanks yeah. to Dana UFC, what they're putting on. Now, your card is headlined by a couple of uh, monsters of men, Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic. Before we dive all into this, I'd like to get your pick. To who you think is going to win that one and how? The main event? Um, yes, sir. I've, I've got Cormier, you know, uh, I'm a Stipe fan. I think uh, I really like, I think he has a boxing background, and, which I enjoy. Uh, but I think uh, if Cormier goes back to mixing up his uh, wrestling with his striking, uh, that'll be his key to victory. You'll, no you'll notice that last fight, uh, he was doing well in the first round. He was mixing his takedowns with his, 
strikes, which 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 really uh, is tough to deal with. And in the second round, he came out just striking with him, which was, uh, I think, horrible. You know, I think Stipe does have the upper hand when it's just striking. So I think if Cormier has the ability to mix up his uh, wrestling with his uh, striking, he's going to get the win. Well, I can't wait for that one. Now, when do you actually head out to Vegas in the Apex? Uh, I believe the 11th, uh, which is next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. And obviously, you're going to have to have the uh, the COVID test and then quarantine. Have they told you, I guess, the schedule as to how many times you're going to have to have that done? Well, I've got to take one here today. One's going to be here today. Uh, it should arrive in the mail today, and I have to go on a Zoom meeting uh, and and do the test live uh, in front of some people. Uh, and My corner man got to do that as well, and then I'm sure I'll have to do it several times once I'm there in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Do they give the option to go up the nose or down the throat? I, I don't know yet, man. I know the nose is is horrible. You know, the last time I I went to uh, what was it Florida was br- for Bryce's fight. Man, I feel like she was playing games with my brain back there, man, with that Q-tip. So, uh, but you know, I understand the precautions. You know, it's best for everyone, and uh, it allows me to to still be able to do the sports that I do. So, uh, let it be, man. For sure. So who will be making the trip with you this time to Vegas and be in your corner? Uh, I'm going to bring the same corners as last time. I've got my, my longtime coaches, Matt Hamilton and Roly Delgado. You know, they've they've been there for me since the beginning, you know, uh, um, since I was an amateur. And, and, and they've almost been more than coaches, you know, almost like fathers to me throughout my whole career. You know, I couldn't I couldn't make the, the ride without them two guys. And also, I have Bill Barton, which is my Muay Thai coach. You know, you, you've seen in 2019, I racked up those two head kick knockouts. Well, a lot of those were, were, were from him and things he had taught me. So uh, that'll be my three coaches. And, man, I'm, I'm glad to bring them and, and have them a part of it. Now, one of the things that I find really fascinating with, you know, the UFC putting on these fights during the pandemic is the fact that there there are no fans. I mean, some fighters – they feed off of the energy that, that's there in the arena. Other fight, fighters, it doesn't really matter as much. I think it just depends on the individual. How do you think that's going to affect you? Well, I, I, I like the I like the lights, man. You know, one of the things I, I, I do this for is I love the attention. I love the lights. I love to perform under the lights, you know. So so uh, I, don't like, I don't like that the crowd's not going to be there because, man, I like hearing that. You know, hear people screaming your name. You you get this big win and they're chanting your name, man. That's that's just a great exhilarating feeling that that you can't match in anything else, man. However, um, some pros to that is, man, you can you can hear your coaches way better. I remember on the Contender Series, man, you, I could really hear my coaches better, and and uh, I think that that really helps, you know, um, when you're out there and you can kind of get your coach's voice in your head. Yeah, well, I'm really excited for this fight for you. It's a really intriguing one because your opponent, Chavez, uh, his last three fights, he's gotten finishes uh, quickly at that. Uh, but this is his UFC debut, so it's it's a step up in competition. It's a different animal altogether. When you look at your opponent's tape and, and his skill set, like where do you feel you're going to be able to hold uh, the biggest advantage in this fight? Uh, you know, I think, I think just mostly experience. You know, uh, I, I'm not going to talk down – all my opponents, you know, uh, I've got nothing respect for him. I couldn't be there and, and 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 do what I do without him being there, you know. Uh, so, but uh, I, with that being said, I I, I think uh, overall I'm just a better fighter everywhere, and and uh, I think my experience, uh, kind of like in the contender series, is going to play a big role, and uh, we're going to get the win. When you close your eyes at night and finish, uh, envision the finish. What do you see happening? Uh, a knockout win, submission, a decision. What do you think goes down? Uh, TKO, man. He, I'm, I'm going to put him away with my strikes, man, and uh, put him with some pressure against the fence, and, man, I'm going to put him away with strikes. Nice. So what is next for you? I mean, you go ahead and you get this win. I'm not sure what your contractual situation is right now, how many fights you have left on your deal, but what are you hoping to accomplish moving forward in the remainder of 2020 and 2021? Well, I, I told my manager, Jason, my, my goal is to, to win this fight here and then jockey my way on one of on those uh, fight island cars at the end of the year. You know, that that would be the icing on the cake, and that's what I've been visualized doing, and, and I, I really want that to come true. You know, I, I get this win, and, and I talk my way on to a, a big fight on fight island. Oh, that'll be nice. I love what they're doing there in Abu Dhabi as Ooh. well. So. 
I'd be looking. Is there something in particular in, in particular that appeals to you about going out there aside from just it being like the richest city in the world? Yeah, for me, you know, one thing I, in my career, fighting has allowed me to go places I, I, I would have never went. You know, um, I, I've been all over, you know, and that's purely from fighting. You know, me growing up, you know, I, I came from nothing. You know, we I wasn't expected to be here where I'm at today, you know, so. The, the ability to travel and, and go to different places throughout the world is, 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 is really, it means a lot to me fighting. It's almost more important, you know, for me to be able to travel around the world to, to fight than to, than to fight on like a, a, a big show or a big card, you know. But the ability to me to be able to travel and experience different places in the world is, is, holds a lot of value to me. And, man, Fight Island would be, woo, man, it'd be great. Yes, sir. Well, I, I hope all of that happens for you here moving forward. I really appreciate you, you taking the time to speak with me here today. And before I let you go, if there's anyone you'd like to thank or uh, any social media you'd like to plug, the floor is yours. You know, I, I just want to thank all my training partners that, that have been, been with me throughout this camp. You know, uh, I'm sorry I've been having to beat on you guys so much, <laughs> but I appreciate you. No, but but honestly, man, these guys push me and, and I, I don't feel like I'm going to get anything in this fight that I haven't experienced already in the gym. And I just want to give a huge shout out to uh, to my training partners. I don't think they get enough credit and my coaches. And uh, I'm just very thankful to have them and and I appreciate of their time. And I'm going to go out there and get them win for myself first and foremost, but also for them.